This is Math One Ten A, Homework Two Point Eight A, and Problem Number Six. Find the derivative of the function. I uh, use the definition of derivative. Okay. So, do you remember what's the definition for derivative? That is. It, it's a function that has been derived from the original function. Right. For example, uh, you have a function g, okay, g of t. Then the derivative of the function, by definition, that is the limit of a difference quotient. That difference quotient is kind of think about that like the slope, right? It's y two minus y one over x two minus x one. So think about this y2 here is g of t plus h okay and y1 here is g of t okay and actually t2 minus t1 is a change in it's a change in the, the horizontal direction so this is h okay and then um, take the limit of this difference quotient as h approaching the zero that's the definition for the duality of the function g with respect to t. Now, all we have to do is just to use this definition here. So we, let's continue. Um, before we continue, uh, I would like to ask you, what is g of t plus h? What does that equal to? Uh, three over a square of three of three pi t plus h yes so you would just input t plus h oh uh, so we place the t here by t plus h because that's it whatever inside this parenthesis that's the input so we're going to replace the t here by t plus h so now we can go back and continue to use the definition for the double t so this will be three over square root of t plus h minus 3 over square root of t, and then um, this quantity over h, and we take the limit as t approaching itself. Okay, now let's continue. Now, before we move on, let's think about if we substitute h to be 0 here, we actually got 0 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator, which is an indeterminate form. Okay, so um, so h equals zero is not in the domain of this function. We cannot do a direct substitution. So we need to do something. So in the lesson, we talk about if we have something like this, one way to do it is to is to first uh, we can try to multiply up and down by the LCD. Okay, LCD of all the terms this turn, this turn, and then if we have more in the denominator, okay? So what's the LCD of this? It's a square root of t plus h, and then well times the square root of t. Yes, it's the product of this one and this one, right? Okay, so let's do that. So that's equal to, so I'm gonna copy this. All right, so it's equal to that, and, um, and we're going to modify up and down by Square the t plus h and square the t. Okay. So basically we multiply up and down by the LCD of all the terms in the numerator and, all, and then also the denominator. Okay. Now after that, then this is going to become limit. But notice the three here is actually a common factor you can take out. So it might make things a little bit simpler if you take out the three here. Uh, maybe I will just put out the three here, okay, that way, uh, make it easier. The three is already out, so three is not there. So when we have this times this, we have three square the t, but I take the three out already, okay? And then um, this times that, uh, we have three times this, but we already take the three out, so I'm going to just put square root of t plus h over here, okay? But then down here, we have h. And then um, the product of this three factor. Okay. Now, what once we get to this, 
Uh, I still cannot substitute H to be zero here because I will get um, H uh, zero is not in the domain of this function, right? So I also get zero over zero, which is indeterminate if I sub substitute H to be zero. So what do we do here? Now you're looking at this, this one here has, uh, we think about one way to get rid of the zero over zero indeterminate type is we multiply, uh, one way to do that is to times the, is rationalize it by multiply by the conjugate uh, up and down, okay? So what's the conjugate of this? Do you know what's conjugate? Uh, yeah? Yes, it's the square root of d plus, square right. root of d plus h, and we multiply that times that. You got it. Okay, so basically to turn the difference here into sum or to turn the sum into different. And okay, so now let's put that. So we multiply square root of, maybe I put it as the next step right here. Remember, whatever you multiply with the numerator, you have to multiply with the denominator. Uh, to make to make the ex, the function equivalent to the one that you start with, okay. Now it looks more complicated, but actually it's actually going in the right direction because after you simplify, it's gonna be become better, okay. So of uh, the three here actually is a constant multiple. We can take it in front of the, the limit, and let's focus on this function, okay. So this one times this, uh, we use the, this is like a minus b times a plus b. So that will become a squared minus b squared, right? So squaring this, we got t. And squaring this, uh, what do we get? t plus h in the parentheses, right? Okay. Now, do you, are you following or is that, any question? Yes, I'm following. Okay, great. So, and then the denominator uh, is this whole bunch of things. So I'm going to make it a little easier. Okay. So we have this, okay, in the denominator. Okay. Now look at the numerator. What happened over here is when this subtract that, and what do we get in the numerator? We get a negative h, right? Yeah, because you're subtracting yeah. this whole quantity. So you do have a negative sign here, so negative h. And what happened over here now, once you do that, you see the h here will divide our this h down in the denominator. And then, and then uh, zero, if you substitute zero into h, uh, zero, is, zero is actually, Okay, okay. So what happened over here is that will become this one over here, okay? Now, once you have this, now let's try to substitute zero into H and see what happened, okay? So we can substitute zero into H. Then what do we get over here? What do you get for this limit? So that will be negative one over. So this is square the t. This is square the t. And then you also have square the t plus square the t, right? Okay. Which is negative three, but square the t times square the t is t. But notice the t here is actually uh, greater than or equal to zero, okay? And this one here is two square the t. So that will be two t times square the t in the denominator. Uh, you can leave like this. However, you can write this in the uh, exponential form. So that will be negative three over two, okay, t to the what power? Three half power, right? This is to the first power, adding one half power is three half power. 
So you can either write it this way or this way. Both of them are right. Okay. And the uh, Ansh over here, did they also ask something? Okay, so then you put it like this. So that's the correct answer here, you see? Now let's state the domain of the function. Well, they're looking for the domain for the, or the original function, right? So looking at this original function over here, then what's the domain for this function? All real numbers, as long as it, it's not equal to zero or less than zero. Oh, okay, all positive, right? Okay, so that yeah. will be, so that will be from zero to infinity, right? So that's why it's zero yeah. to infinity. Okay, so that's why. Okay, and then um, we also got the dual T. So the dual T is G prime of T is negative three over two, and then T times where the T, okay? Again, uh, the domain for this will be, from um, zero to infinity, okay, uh, excluding zero. So because the square the t in the denominator, so you have this set, yeah. right? Okay. So does that answer your question? 